Okay, so the topic of this video will be the difference between gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. So let's get started. So here's a diagram of a typical bacteria cell, and I want to note the three layers that most bacteria have. Their innermost layer, colored green here, is the plasma membrane, which directs what enters and exits the cell. It's a phospholipid bilayer with some proteins scattered in between the phospholipid bilayer. The middle layer in gold, this is the cell wall, which provides structural support to the cell made up of a polysaccharide called peptidoglycan. The cell wall is really the most important of the three layers when it comes to understanding gram-negative and gram-positive bacteria. The third red outer layer, this is the capsule. It's more of a sticky outer layer for attachment and protection. But like I said, I really want you to focus on the cell wall. So let's get started. So let's do a little compare and contrast, gram-positive versus gram-negative bacteria. Gram-positive, they have an innermost plasma membrane, and there it is in my drawing. And the gram-negative bacteria also have an innermost plasma membrane. So there it is. So there's our phospholipid bilayer, the plasma membrane. Now, the gram-positive bacteria have a thick cell wall made up of peptidoglycan. And so there it is, kind of five layers thick right there in my animation. The gram-negative bacteria also have a cell wall. It's just thinner. So there it is, only two layers thick in my animation. Now, again, these are both the cell wall of the, of the bacteria cells. When we look at the gram-negative bacteria, they also have an additional outer phospholipid bilayer, an additional outer membrane. And now we come to the third layer called the capsule, the sticky outer layer. So there's the capsule for the gram-positive bacteria. And gram-negative also have an outer capsule. So there's the capsule for the gram-negative bacteria as well. Well, one thing to mention is gram-positive bacteria are more easily treatable with antibiotics simply because gram-positive lack that second outer phospholipid bilayer there. Therefore, the gram-negative bacteria are harder to treat with antibiotics simply because it's harder for the antibiotic to gain entrance into the bacteria cell. Eventually, we're going to talk about a gram stain, and when we do, we're going to mention that gram-positive bacteria underneath the microscope appear a violet-purple color after performing what's called a gram stain. Now, the gram-negative bacteria, after performing a gram stain, appear a reddish to pinkish color underneath the microscope. And we're going to explain why this is in just a few moments. So let's talk about this process known as a gram stain. Now, the purpose of a gram stain is to help identify whatever infectious bacteria that is getting us sick. And so the reason we need to do this is because treatment will differ based upon the outcome of this gram stain. And so when we look at the steps, we're going to break this down into a variety of steps. Number one, we're going to obtain bacteria from a culture and using an inoculation loop, we'll transfer bacteria onto the inoculation loop. And then we're going to smear the bacteria across a glass microscope slide. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to fix the bacteria to the slide so they don't get washed away when we do the upcoming steps in the gram stain. And we're going to do that by taking our glass slide and we're actually going to pass it over an open flame a few times and the heat will fix the bacteria to the slide. As I said, this way they don't get washed away when we start using some of the chemicals in the latter steps. So the first chemical we're going to use is a chemical called crystal violet. And like the name implies, it has a purplish violet color. So we'll add a few drops of crystal violet onto the bacteria samples. And once we do, let's zoom on in uh, and take a closer look at the cells of the bacteria that are trapped on this glass slide. 
And when we do, we see that we have the gram-positive bacteria on the left and the gram-negative bacteria on the right. Now at this stage, we don't know which bacteria in our sample are gram-positive and gram-negative. I'm just labeling them uh, for our ease and simplicity. So right now, all we've done is we added the crystal violet. Those purple molecules were added and they passed through the layers of the bacteria into the actual bacteria cell. And then the next step is we're going to add iodine. Iodine kind of has a brownish, goldish, bronzish color. And here come the iodine molecules. And they actually pass through the layers and they actually bond and bind with the crystal violet molecules that have previously entered. And they kind of clump together and, uh, and make the molecule bigger. So the next step is to wash the bacteria with alcohol. Alcohol is a de-staining chemical. And watch what happens to the gram-positive bacteria on the left. The cell wall will shrink and the capsule kind of gets dissolved and, uh, and washed away. Now for the gram negative on the right, the same thing with the cell wall. The cell wall kind of shrinks, but notice how that the capsule and the outer layer, the outer phospholipid bilayer that were washed away. This is because of the dehydrative nature of alcohol. And now here's a big thing that happens. Watch what happens next. Because of the alcohol wash, because the cell wall is so thin for the gram negative bacteria, the crystal violet iodine molecules also get washed away. So the gram negative lose their color. Underneath a microscope right now, if we were to view the bacteria samples, the gram negative would look transparent and have no color, but the gram positive bacteria would appear a purple violet color because they retained the crystal violet dye. So the next step is to apply a kind of a reddish colored mo molecule dye called safranin. And so here's safranin being added and what happens is the red pinkish safranin molecules uh, pass through the cell wall and actually bind with the lipids of the, lipid, the phospholipid bilayer. And so now we can actually see the results of a gram stain underneath the microscope. Underneath the microscope, the results appear, the gram positive appear purple in color. Now you might be asking yourself, why is that? How come uh, they don't appear pink? Because they have safranin in them as well. The reason is simple that the safranin, the pink color of the safranin is just overshadowed and masked by the deepness, the darkness of the purple crystal violet. So you don't even really see the pink safranin in the gram positive bacteria. It's there, you just don't see it. And notice how the gram negative bacteria, because they lost their crystal violet dye and they only have the pinkish safranin, the gram negative bacteria underneath the microscope would appear pink in color. So here are some actual pictures of a gram positive bacteria, notice the dark purple color, and some pictures of gram negative bacteria, notice the reddish pinkish color. So as I wrap up this video, I just wanted to put the two side by side one last time. Pause the video if you want to read through the text again. But the reason a gram stain is so important is knowing whether a bacteria is gram positive or gram negative, we can then begin proper treatment. As the notes say, gram positive are more easily treatable with antibiotics. That's because they only have the one phospholipid bilayer. The gram-negative bacteria are more difficult to treat. That's because of their dual phospholipid bilayer. So there you go. Pause the video if you're still reading and post your comments in the, thought, in the box below. I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching.